going to talk about how to create a customer deposit or how to use QuickBooks to track your customer deposits. So the people who use customer deposits are, you know, um, if you create an estimate and you want a 50% down payment before you proceed with the installation, or uh, if you are doing a job for a customer and you want, you know, 15% down or 100% down even. So this is just the way to use QuickBooks to track those customer deposits. Okay. There's another video also I should mention that, that uses the simple view, the simple way to track customer deposits. So you can go check that out as well in our other video. All right. So the hard way, <laughs> but the accurate way. So first things first, we want to go ahead and create a new item called customer deposits. All right, so I'm going to go in here and push control N. It's a new item. It's another, it's an other charge. Customer deposit. Okay, so if you want it always to be 25%, you can, or want it to default to 25%, 50%, you can put that here so it defaults. Okay, uh, let's see. And I can put in a negative, right, because we're, well, you'll see later, but it's a negative because it's taking off of the, the total that you're charging. And the account that you want to go to, you want to create a customer deposit account on your chart of accounts. Okay, it's going to tell me I don't have that yet, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up. This is going to be an other current liability. So why is that? When you have a customer deposit, they're putting 25% down on the project. And if you do not go in and do anything on the project, you technically owe them that money, right? Because if they could pay you 25% and you don't do anything, you owe them that money back. So that's why it's an other current liability. Okay. Copy this down. And I'm going to go ahead and say save and close. Okay. So now we have our other charge item set up customer deposits and we're going to say okay. So now we're going to do a couple transactions with customer deposits on them so you can see how they work. So we're going to go ahead and start with our estimate. We're just going to do estimates to invoices on this. All right. So we're going to go ahead and create an estimate for Jason Birch and we're going to put on here some drywall 10 hours of this with we're not going to add the class for now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add some plumbing. 12 hours of plumbing. And we'll go ahead and add some painting as well. Five hours of painting. Okay, so the total work estimate that I'm providing my customer is 1947.75. All right, so now what I want to do on your estimate, again, you're going to do a subtotal. Okay, that subtotal here totals up the 1947.75 for me. Underneath there, I'm going to go ahead and say customer deposit. Now, since I put in the negative 25%, okay, it's going to calculate for me right there how much the deposit needs to be. You can uh, add a couple additional lines if you want to in here so that they separate it out. Um, you can do that by right clicking and saying insert line. The way I did it was control insert. Okay, so it separates it out so it stands out a little bit more. Then when you give this to your client, I'm going to mark this as non-taxable. When you give this to your client, you say, you know, here is the work that we're complete. Here's your estimate total. Here's the deposit that we need to start doing work. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say save and close. Now, when we go, uh, I'm going to open up this estimate so I know the amount. Now we're going to go ahead and say the client is going to say, sure, I'm ready. Let's go ahead with this uh, work that you gave me an estimate for. And they give you a check for $486.95. Okay. So what you do, you just come in here and create a sales receipt for Jason Birch. And you're going to put in here customer deposit. And again, you, I wouldn't be, you wouldn't have to be going back and forth because you would put in the deposit exactly how much they put on the check. But right now I just, I couldn't remember, 486.94, 46.94. But you would know how much this customer deposit was because you'd have the check in front of you, right? So check number one, two, three, four, payment by check. Okay. And we have it as non-taxable and say save 
and new. All right. So that's one customer deposit. <clears throat> so now we're going to go ahead and say we want to bill for 50% of this job. We're 50% done. We're going to bill out another 50% of this job. So I'm going to go ahead and create my invoice here. And I'm going to say for 50% of the job, do a little bit of progress invoicing. So then it pulls all the information over. Okay. So notice here we're doing half, so 50% of all of these different items, all these different uh, service items that we did. So it's going to bill half, $973.88. Then if you look down a little lower, it's also going to take out 50% of the customer deposit because we're billing out for 50%. All right. We're going to apply half of the customer deposit to this invoice for now. All right. So before I save this, let's go ahead and look at that customer deposit account. Right now, you can see we have $486.94 sitting in here. Okay. $486.94 as a balance in here. Once I save this sales receipt or save this invoice, all right, it's going to now apply $243.47 to that deposit. So now my balance in my customer deposit account is $243.47 because that's what's left between these two. Okay, so if you're hopefully you're following so far, we're going to go ahead and save and close this. And we're going to do another estimate. All right. So on this one here, we're going to do it for Babcock's Music Shop and do some carpeting only. And it's going to be 20 hours of carpeting. Okay. And we're going to do our customer deposit. One thing, if it keeps on marking it taxable there, what I did when I set up my customer deposit item, I want to come in here, right click, edit the item, mark it as non-taxable. Okay, so next time it'll show up as non-taxable. So here you have your estimate, you provide it to your client. I'm just going to copy this this time. You provide it to your client. Let's say because it's just the one single line item, actually, we're, we're going to do a 50% deposit. All right, so we're going to change that up a little bit. So the total uh, on the estimate it shows you the total work is fifteen seventy five, and the deposit is seven eighty seven fifty. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice from this, and I'm going to create it. Or I'm sorry, cancel. I'm going to go ahead and save this and give it to my client. And the client's going to go ahead and say that sounds like a great deal, and give me my deposit. So again, I go and create a sales receipt for Babcock's Music Shop. I say customer deposit. I put in the amount here. The amount of the check, which I have in front of me that he's going to give to me. Put in the check number. Put in the payment method. And I have here my deposit going in to be deposited. So I say save and close here. Now again, if I look at my customer deposit account, see how it has now both of those in here and it's still sitting here as you know the 243s is still outstanding so Babcock's music shop we went ahead and finished the job I'm going to go ahead and create the invoice from here for hundred percent of the estimate we finished it off so now they only owe us seven hundred eighty seven dollars because they already paid us seven hundred eighty seven fifty so they only owe us the remaining balance and I create this invoice hand over to the customer save and close Okay. Again, it takes it out of this customer deposit account. All right. So a lot of people um, say that's fantastic, except for I get 20 customer deposits a day, <laughs> which is great news because that means your business is doing really great. Um, but it does get a little bit frustrating to track. So we came up with this additional step here. Why we also use this other current liability account instead of doing it in the simple fashion uh, is you can also come in here and because it's a balance sheet account, you can reconcile it. So we can right click and reconcile this account, All right? You're saying to me, we don't get a statement. What are you talking about? So usually I have clients as part of their monthly close. They come in and they do this reconciliation. They close 
their customer deposit account. So the statement ending date would be whatever month you're closing. Your ending balance is always going to be zero. Always going to be zero every time. Now, if you do have a ton of customer deposits going through this account, you might want to consider doing mid-month reconciliations, even if you're doing it at the end of the month, because that'll break down the amount of information um, and kind of let you, you know, get rid of the first 15 days and then the second 15 days. So if you focus your information on a smaller period of time, it's a little bit easier, right? Okay, so ending balance is zero. Never any finance charges down here. And we're going to go ahead and say continue. All right. So now we have here, um, I have Jason Birch. And you can see on the payee side, Jason Birch, those two. But they're not tying out. So I know that those we can't reconcile. But Babcock's Music and Babcock's Music are, are both here. So I can check mark both of those off. My difference down here is now zero. And I can go ahead and reconcile because I'm all done with this one. There's nothing else to reconcile to make it go down to zero. Okay, so I'm going to close out of this. I reconcile my customer deposit account. Why does that matter? Because we can create a custom report. Custom transaction detail report. Okay. So you can make the period all. You can total by customer. You can uh, come in here and create a filter and filter for the account customer deposits. Okay. First, I'm just going to save this one first. All right. So it shows me all my deposits. Again, you're saying to me, that's fantastic, but I get 20 of these a day. I only want to know what's open, right? So one of the other things you can do when you modify this report, go up to filters, go down to cleared and say no. So it's saying we, we have reconciled, we want all the ones that have not been reconciled. So I say, okay, pops up here, shows me my customer that has an open balance. Then once you have this report built, you want to make sure and memorize it into your memorized report groups or um, add it to your icon bar if you would really, really like this report. And that way you can only see who has an open balance and who you need to uh, finish out, you know, who you need to finish out the invoice for and, you know, do the final invoice for. And also if, um, again, if this job decided to quit at this point, what amount of money you would owe back to them, which would it only be the 243.47 because you've already um, done 50% of the work. Okay. So that's customer deposits.